Hey everyone, today we will learn about how we can handle user profile data in Superbase. So, if you have any experience with Superbase authentication or you have watched my Superbase authentication tutorial series, you'll know that when you create a new account, it creates a new row in the users table. And the users table is actually under the auth schema. This schema is fully managed and protected by Superbase and it is read only through SQL and table editor. You cannot change the data manually plus you cannot have access to them through the libraries like the JavaScript libraries we are using or through the APIs. So how do you actually store user profile data if you cannot uh, add any more data to the users table? So let's see how we can do that. Superbase actually recommends you to store additional user data or user profile data in a separate table. So let's call it just profile table and this is the users table from the auth schema. So every time a new account is created or a new row is created in the users table, you create another row inside the profiles table storing the user information and you connect those two rows using foreign keys because just by itself you cannot tell which profile row belongs to which user so you connect them through foreign keys a foreign key is basically a column that is referring to other rows in other tables using primary keys so let's see how we can use it uh, then you will understand it better um, we can create another column let's just call it user And we know that this profile row belongs to this user and this user's primary key is this. So we will store that primary key in this column. And also, if you don't understand primary key, it's basically a unique identifier for the specific row. So here, this is the primary key. This ID column is the primary key for user's table. And it doesn't have to be ID, you can just call it whatever you want, but the common convention is ID. So we stored the primary key in the users column, and now these two rows are connected to this, this foreign key. So that's how you can store user profile information. Also, you can use a column for both primary key and a foreign key. So here in the profiles table, instead of adding another column, we can just use this ID as both our primary key and a foreign key. Instead of creating a new ID, we can store the primary key of the user. So let's put one here and let's delete this. And we define this column as both primary key and foreign key and that will work as well. Now we want to create the profile row every time a new row is created in the users table. We want to do this automatically. We can use Postgres functions for that. A function in Postgres is basically some SQL statement. So let's see how we can use it. Now let's create a table. So let's call it profiles and disable RLS. And we have an ID column, uh, let's set to UUID. And you can create a foreign key using this a chain icon. And select the schema, auth. And then users. And we want to reference of ID of the users table. And then you have two options, action if a reference row is updated. Uh, we will choose no action, action if reference row is removed. Basically, what will happen if the user row is deleted? So we want to choose cascade. It will delete all the rows in other tables that is using the reference of the user row. And let's save. And I will change this created at column name to camel case. And then add a new column name choose text then email and also text then profile photo 
and it will be text as well so that's it let's save and now we need to create a function you can do that from database and then functions but i'm gonna use the sql editor so i have this snippet that will do everything for us so let me explain and also it can be found on my repository so check that out so the first two line we are checking if the on auth user created trigger exists or not if it exists we are gonna drop it which means delete it also here if the handle new user function exists we will also drop it and then we'll create a new function handle new user and you can keep everything same and the actual logic of adding the data is here between uh, begin and this end part so let me explain what it is doing so we are inserting data into profiles table and we want to fill these four columns id name email and profile photo and since we are using camel case for profile photo you need to make sure you wrap the text by quotations otherwise it won't work and then we are inserting values for these columns so here new means the new row that is created on the users table so we are getting the new user id and put it inside profiles table id then we have raw user metadata which is a column in the users table which holding a json object and inside the json object we are expecting a name property and we're getting the value and put it inside name and same thing for these two we will put email to email column and avatar url to profile photo column and finally we are creating a new trigger on auth user created so a trigger basically means an event you have event like after a row is inserted or updated or deleted so we are creating a new trigger on auth user created after insert which is the actual event on auth.users means auth schemas users table and we want to execute for each row this function from public schema handle new user so now we can just uh, run this snippet so run this query so success no rows return we can also check by going to database the functions and now we have a new function handle new user on the public schema and if you go to trigger and go to auth and here we have a new trigger on auth user created after insert so now we can add authentication to our application uh, i'm gonna use github auth because it's the most simple way of adding authentication plus i'm gonna do it very quickly if you want to learn about it check out my super base authentication tutorial series so first just go to github.com go to the settings and if you scroll down you will have the option developer settings or apps and add a new or app so add the application name superface so tvyt homepage url localhost 3000 for development authorization callback url can be found on the dashboard uh, go to authentication then go to providers and search for github enable it and you'll copy this url and just paste it here register generate a new client secret and uh, let's just copy the client secret and the client id and add it over here save and that's it now we can create a new server action for our application so inside actions directory i'm going to create a file login.js and here i'm just going to paste the code the code is pretty simple use server for creating server actions and we have this login function 
and here we're going to call the sign in with OAuth function. We'll pass the provider name GitHub, and we are passing a redirect to URL, uh, which is uh, your domain slash auth slash callback, and the domain is coming from site URL environment variable. So you need to create one inside the environment variable file. And I put localhost 3000. It is for development, but for production, you need to add your own domain. If any kind of error happens, we're gonna log it out. Otherwise, we're gonna redirect the user to data.url. And finally, we have a logout function, which will run the signout function. And we're just gonna console log the error. This is pretty much it for this file, but we also need to create this slash auth slash callback API route. So let's create that inside app auth slash callback slash route dot js because it's an API route. And I'm just going to paste the code again. I've also copied this code directly from the documentation. So let me show you how you can find it. So just go to the auth documentation and then in the flow section, then go to social login OAuth, find GitHub. And if you scroll down, here you will see this code for auth slash callback route and just copy paste it. I've explained what this code is doing in my authentication tutorial series. So that's it. Now we can call this login function from a button so let's go to the nap component we can get a user session using the get user method so first we need to create the super base client and now just call the get user method so await super base dot auth dot get user and in the login button, we will add a form action attribute. And I'll pass the login method. And we'll do the same thing for the logout button, but we'll pass logout method. So that should be it. So now let's log in. Authorize. And now we are logged in. And now let's go to the database and users. Here we have a new user row. And if you just scroll to the right. So here we have a raw user metadata. We have the name, email, you have uh, avatar URL and some other stuff. These are actually came from GitHub. And now if we go to public schema, in profiles, we should have a row. Here we have a row. We have this uh, name, profile photo, and also the email. And now you can use the profile table however way you want. And whenever you need to add a user reference to other tables, you're going to use this profile table. So let's say, for example, in our post table, a user can create a post. But here, we don't have a user reference. So we can add another column. Let's just call it user. And we can select a column type. It should be UUID. And add a foreign key. And we should refer to profiles table and the column should be ID. Now our post user column is having a reference to profiles ID column. And whenever a user is deleted, we want to delete the profile, but we also want to delete the posts as well. So we can also choose cascade and let's just save. And we don't want primary key. We don't want to be nullable. It doesn't need to be unique. And I will also add a default value. And the default value would be the ID of the user that we have just created. For now, obviously. And now all of our column will have the same user ID. And after that, I will remove the default value.
So a new column is created and we have a user and you can use this arrow to see the reference and it is referencing to the profiles table and the profiles table is referencing to the auth schemas users table. So this is how you can store user profile data. In the next video, we will learn how to join tables. We will learn how we can fetch the post data, including its user data. So that's it for today. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.